Hi, it's Matt here and Happy New Year to you. Welcome to the first of a series of Thursday videos where I'll preview uh, various tools and reports and elements of the race cards um, by looking at the, the racing upcoming and um, hopefully trying to find a few winners but mostly uh, trying to showcase what we have inside Gigi's Gold. Um, in this first uh, instalment my intention is to really cover kind of setup components and then as I say we'll look at the racing tomorrow. Um, it is pretty uninspiring stuff this week it needs to be said. Uh, there are a lot of 0 to 50s and 0 to 55s <coughs> on the flat um, and some fairly dispiriting stuff over jumps as well but every race has a winner and we've got the kit and caboodle to find some of them uh, hopefully at good prices so without further ado let's look at tomorrow's racing as i'm recording this um, when you watch this it'll probably be today or it may even be yesterday um, one of the things about this is that regardless of whether you're watching ahead of time or after the fact i hope that there will be some nutritional value in the videos uh, in terms of things that perhaps you're not doing at the moment that you could be introducing into your into your punting style okay so tomorrow we have uh, racing at Chepstow, Clonmel, Newcastle and Chelmsford so that's two on the all weather and two on the jumps and if I click this little plus button here um, we can see that the current going at Chepstow and Clonmel is heavy and at Newcastle and Chelmsford it's standard. So um, heavy ground. Now the first thing I like to do every day actually is to check the weather forecast because one of the things that we can do is we can respond to potential going changes simply by changing the going in the drop down menu like so. Um, so let's have a look at tomorrow's weather and this is just the Beeb website on their weather page um, <clears throat> beneath the video box you can't see it I've got a um, I've got the slider with the date and time on it so it starts Wednesday six o'clock which is about the time I'm recording this uh, this is 6 a.m. tomorrow morning Thursday morning and you can see there's a big band of rain sweeping across Ireland so Clonmel's Going, I'm not actually sure where Clonmel is in Ireland, but looking at that um, that band there, which covers the entirety of the Republic, um, Clonmel is going to get some, so it's not going to be any less wet or muddy there than heavy. Uh, I think we can safely assume. Chepstow is on the border here, probably there somewhere, um, and by. This is midday tomorrow, so before the first race, um, Chepstow's probably going to get a bit. And by three o'clock, um, it will have had some more. Um, it's also very chilly tomorrow, I think, uh, or perhaps overnight tonight, so there might be a frost. Either way, um, the, what I'm trying to get to is 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 the answer the question: Is the going going to materially change from heavy at these two venues? The answer I'm fairly sure is no um, <clears throat> and heavy is one of the setups that I personally look for because um, r racing is about uh, often about horses which are best suited to conditions and the extremes of conditions present some of the best opportunities for punting so um, heavy ground is a great example of an extreme going which is testing you don't want a fast horse on heavy ground you want a horse that's slow but can carry on being slow when others have had enough of being a bit quicker um, if you see what I mean likewise on firm ground at places like Bath that can be quite a specialist going as well because it, a lot of horses won't let themselves down they won't um, it, they, they get a bit of sting or jar in their legs on that quicker ground so that's another one where horses that are proven on that sort of ground um, is an advantage. There are also specialist distances, there are quirky courses, um, there are all sorts of things where uh, it's kind of, it, it, the race setup lends itself to a horse with a bit of a specialism against that. 
So um, let's have a quick whiz through these races at Chepstow. And I'd be more inclined, what I'm looking for is, is exposed, races with exposed form. And by that I mean um, all the horses have had plenty of goes already. Um, so in this opening race, the 1205, a mare's handicap hurdle, you can see most of them are aged kind of six, seven and above. There's a couple of five-year-olds in there. Um, and they've all had a few goes already. Now, my setup on Instant Expert um, isn't ideal for this because I want to get all of the data uh, like so. And the horse here that I'm interested in, or the horses, uh, haven't got any odds at time of writing. We haven't got the ratings in yet. Um, but that's fine because I'm looking for kind of profile horses here. Um, these heavy horses are of interest to me. Um, now, one of the things that uh, it surprises me that more people don't know because I use this literally every race that I look at is if you click on within the Instant Expert, if you click on a particular um, crosshair, if you like, of row and column, uh, in this case, I want to look at Dan Dussois' heavy ground form. So if I click anywhere in this, this, these three boxes here like this, it brings up those three races for me. So I can see, um, you can see heavy, heavy, heavy. I can see at a glance Dan Dussois' performance in heavy ground. And again with Hlantara here, who has run 16 times on heavy, won three of them, I can see all... 16 of them here so I'm obviously not interested in <clears throat> not so interested in that historical data but the more recent stuff I can see she won a couple of times in uh, 2018 and once in 2019 off 111 looks like hasn't won since is 11 pounds lower now um, which is okay but not if she's in no sort of form um, we can see that she um, she was third at Force Last uh, in February last year, off a six pound higher mark. So she's not not without hope. Um, this was a pretty desperate run at Hexham um, in a handicap chase. This was a hurdle race here, so perhaps hurdling is her bag. Um, I imagine she's going to be a massive price, and she might be slightly playable. Um, you see, this is on the win ticket and so she's naught from two at uh, Chepstow but she has run second here albeit a good number of years ago so definitely not without a chance the other two of interest are Ruby Yates uh, who has won two of her last three on heavy ground at longer trips than than this two miles so that'd be a cause for concern although she has won uh, again many years ago over this trip more recently second to Vedana Blue reads extremely well in the context of this race but it was uh, five years ago now um, so again pinch of salt territory I think but nevertheless these horses that I, I want the ones that can act in the conditions and these three can act in the conditions now a number of these other ones haven't really shown that they can't act in the conditions see this one's lady tremaine and sasso uh, have never run on heavy ground uh Eur de gloire um, and letty lutz have only run once and you couldn't even though um in both cases they've been beaten far enough you couldn't be categorical about their inability to handle heavy ground it looks on the basis of very thin evidence that maybe they can't um, but you know you, one needs to be very careful when drawing inferences from essentially non-existent uh, sample sizes in the case of jaunty freya she's had a few more goes in various of these uh, situational setups and, and failed to fire uh, she was third in a two mile heavy ground bumper at taunton um, that is not a very testing track and actually rarely gets heavy um, and she was pulled up in a maiden hurdle where she burst a blood vessel in fair, fairness to her so um, again you know you couldn't be too categorical about that likewise Astrovia who has um, won on her only trip to 
Chepstow, uh, and that was in October last year, and so quite recently. Uh, my guess is that this horse is going to be overbet, um, even though her heavy ground form is not. Again, you see, she's she's got a couple of placed efforts, but beaten far enough in small fields. Um, I think she's probably going to be fairly short in here. So I just um, I just quickly pulled up the betting uh, to see the see if I'm right about that. She's in second favourite. Um, around about five to one, 11 to two. Uh, Lady Tremaine is the short favorite. That's one of the ones where we don't really know about the going. Um, we've been running in novices. So if we just have a quick look at that, um, we can see this is the second time in a handicap. One on handicap debut last time in soft ground, um, prominent at a track that does suit uh, forward going types. Um, she obviously has she's she's very unexposed she only had four goes whereas lots of these have been um <clears throat> have had plenty more goes um so she she is um she must have been a very late starter she didn't start life till six years old which is quite rare these days very stoutly bred um I can actually see why she's as short as she is and um, I, I wouldn't particularly want to bet against her but if I was looking at those heavy ground horses against her we can see that Plantara is about a 10 to 1 shot um, not outstanding value but reasonable of the other pair we've got uh, Ruby Yates and Dame du Soir Ruby's in at 7 uh, Dame du Soir five to one this is very early betting and and massive over round on their 15 percent over round of the best prices so it'd be worth checking those again in the morning um i think this astrovia is probably the one to field against in this race i don't really have a strong view on what to go with um definitely respect the favorite i might back one of the heavy ground horses without the favorite um and again, those markets will be available tomorrow. So if you if, if you kind of fear the favourite, but you don't really want to bet seven to four in a handicap on heavy ground, then take the favourite out, bet without the favourite. Of course, you'll be getting a shorter price about anything else, but this horse is no longer a concern to you. Um, so I'd be looking at Ruby, Dam and Hlantara, um, one or two, maybe of those three without the favourite here, I think that might be an interesting play. And I'd look at, in a bit more detail at the pace set up. Um, in fact, why don't we do that now? We can see that, let me just get that up there a little bit. Um, and you can see that uh, Astrovir is a hold up horse, Clantara likewise at the other end of the field. Dame de Soir races prominently. Um, and Lady Tremaine and Ruby Yates are probably gonna be sort of midfield. Um, I don't think, even though it says one out of three winners has come from far back. Um, I don't think that's that's kind of where I'd want to be necessarily. I think I perhaps want to be a little bit nearer to the action in a two mile race. Um, obviously, again, one out of three is a, you know, you know, these are micro samples. They're not meaningful, unfortunately. And generally speaking, you wouldn't want to be too far back in a race like this. So, um, yeah. I probably, I think the Hlantara is you know, maybe destined to run on into the frame again. Um, and that'd be fine if she was second behind Lady Tremaine. Uh, but maybe I'd probably be looking at the other two more prominent runners um, to, to fill the place behind the favourite. Uh, either without the favourite or in exacta betting. Uh, that'd be my approach there. Now, let's see if there's anything else on the Chepstow card. This is a maiden hurdle. Not for me, thank you. Another maiden hurdle. Second division of the same same maiden hurdle. Um, a novice chase. A novice hurdle. Uh, interestingly, the favourite is, uh, has won his soul start or her soul start. I'm not sure about that. Um, on heavy ground over two and a half miles in a bumper stout stout staying performance there no doubt um, not really a race for me
This handicap chase uh, is a little bit more interesting. Again, I want all the data I can get, and I can see that this guy Billingsley now, uh, you know, 16 to 1, um, got a line of green here on the win, and it might be that that's historic form. Indeed, it is. Uh, let's move that up a bit. So you can see um, two wins at Chepstow right here uh, over this course and distance in 2018, and a win on heavy at Haydock in a handicap chase two years ago off 122, now off 110. Uh, that's quite a big descent down the weights. Um, only had three goes on heavy since then. Led narrowly at the fifth, blundered an unseated rider five out. So couldn't say he was out of the race then. That was this time last year. Uh, off 136. Wow. And this is off 110. Um, Sandown after that race, only sixth. May have may have dented his confidence and then um, just two weeks after that pulled up um, yeah so and hasn't run hasn't run on heavy ground since then always leads interesting the, the class is as we know the track is no problem um, we can see on uh, quicker going I mean this is all quite historic form um, probably got outpaced there, weakened, I think more likely outpaced. Um, the distance is right, the field size is okay, and he's obviously a mile below his last winning mark. Um, there's a chance that he's gone at the game, if we look at his form figures, 6PP06, they're not terribly inspiring. He gets... Ten pounds up to ten pounds from the field here. Um, he's dropped very quickly down the handicap, mainly because he's been running like stink. But if you look at this, um, he actually ran all right. He was a massive price, but he ran in a Grade Three handicap chase three starts ago. Then he ran at Cheltenham on his first start this season. Um, and then sights were lowered quite considerably last time out over a longer trip on quicker ground. And he, well, let's just say he wasn't beaten as far. Um, he is £10 lower than that here. And, um, yeah, I mean... he. You know, he, he he's obviously got no he got no no form to speak of recently, but he's got what I like. He's got back class. He definitely handles heavy ground. He definitely handles the track. He's chucked in on his old form if he can rediscover a little bit of that, and he is a sixteen to one chance uh, at the time of writing. Of course, the only best odds guaranteed firm are only eleven to one. Um, it wouldn't surprise me if this lad Billingsley took took plenty of support just on the basis of his back class and um, I might be tempted into a bet I kind of like best odds guaranteed if I can if I can get it but I I do think if he's got put it like this if he's got any chance he's going to shorten if he's got no chance um, he's probably going to skid out a bit further so but he's an interesting one there definitely um, a bit of a Hail Mary, uh, maybe a win only play because he's, I guess he's going to blow out as likely as, as hit the frame. Um, not interested in this handicap hurdle where nothing has, uh, shown any alacrity for the ground, which is my key consideration on heavy, as you will have noted by now. And, um, this handicap chase at the end here, then we've got another one here, Mouse in the House, who's, Two from two um, on heavy, both at Force Lass, Force Lass if you prefer, um, in low grade races. This is a relatively, it's a 0 to 120 actually, um, and this was a 0 to 110, and this was a 0 to 100. 
so he's a little bit higher in class only two pounds higher he's had a few goes at the track um, over this trip ran well once not so well the other two uh, he might be worth a second look um, although it looks like his best form is at two miles again you know 12 to 1 I, I'm kind of sometimes suckered in but always drawn to a price um, Evan Williams has had a pretty difficult time up until recently he does seem to have turned a corner now um, but he's a 10% strike rate he's a higher strike rate historically um, so that's another one to, to take an interest in on heavy ground anyway I'm conscious of the video length and I do want to talk about the, the all weather tracks in a minute so I'm just going to very quickly whiz through um, the uh, the Clonmel meeting and again I'm interested in specifically in heavy ground uh, not fussed for the maiden hurdle this handicap looks a pretty uh, uninspiring contest um, so naught to 102 interesting 102 <laughs> why not oh, dreadful race <clears throat> why not 100 who knows um, yeah I'm not sure there's too much to excite here I'm going to make that heavy oops We've got this spare brakes. He's won a couple, but not uh, not for a couple of years. But he was in good form there. He's dropped quite a bit in the weights. Um, there's old spare brakes. Second run off a layoff. Twelve years old now. Entitled to come on for that for that first run for nine months, um, but I'm not. You can see. He, he ran second this kind of time last year in a handicap hurdle off a similar mark. Um, not really desperate to have a bet in that race. In fact, in fairness, I'm not desperate to have a bet tomorrow. It's, it, as I said at the top of this video, it's pretty middling stuff. And I, I think one of the, <clears throat> one of the key um, things to think about here is as um, Michael Pizzola, the American punter and writer, uh, is fond of saying let the bet make you that what he means by that is if it looks if you're not sure just pass the race because it's pretty you, know, you, you need to have a degree of confidence when you're wagering um, and that Clonmel card for me is bereft of it now there will be people who've got other inns um, and they've found a, a route to uh, to a potential bet there but not me Let's move on. Newcastle is standard. Now, one of the things that you need to be aware of at Newcastle, um, in actual fact, in it, at any track, is on the right-hand side of these blue header bars, we've got this new car, we've got this course info link. So if I just click that, uh, it's going to open up a window with all sorts of insights on a uh, Newcastle race course. And importantly, it's got this, which is the course map. Now, Newcastle is a bit, uh, well, a bit unique. <laughs> you, one cannot have gradations of uniqueness. <laughs> Newcastle is new, is unique as an all weather track in the UK because it has a straight mile. Um, so we, uh, this, dem this makes different demands, not just of the horses, but also the jockeys in terms of, um, riding a race and having a, a good clock in terms of uh, pacing it um, accurately and and some jockeys are better than others at that so it's definitely a a challenging strip uh, for riders we also have and, and I just want to um, it's just out of the window here let me see if I can pull this into the window um, production standards of the highest order as ever Right, so what I want to do is I want to type in Newcastle Bias. Um, and I'm looking for this guy. Newcastle Racecourse All Weather Run Style Bias. Open that in a new tab. And um, 
if I just do that. Right, so this is Dave Renham's excellent research, and he's got um, some data for five furlongs, uh, six furlongs, seven furlongs, and a mile, <coughs> all of the straight track distances. And what we can see, like the quick, the quick management summary is that, um, well, the very quick management summary is that you should have a look at this because it's really good and it will help you. Um, uh, the the more specific quick management summary is that five furlongs, uh, there's a, a good advantage to those who lead, but those who are held up um, do quite well as well. Those in mid div, uh, those sort of in the middle of the pack are neither here nor there. So if they go a steady pace on the front is the place to be. If they go too quick, the hold up horses is the place to be. Um, over six furlongs, we've got a strong advantage to those on the lead. Um, so that's uh, so five and six furlongs, you kind of want to be on the front. At seven furlongs, it gets a bit messy. Um, there's not, not, I mean, there's still a, maybe a slight edge to leaders, but it's, as you can see, these actual over expected and impact value figures are, uh, a lot of them are, are around one, which is neither good nor bad. So there's not, it, it's essentially, it's a fair, it's quite a fair, um, quite a fair track and trip. Whereas at a mile, we start to see the advantage turn on its head and those that are held up um, tend to have the edge in one mile straight track handicaps at Newcastle and indeed at Ascot which has a similar kind of constitution straight mile with a, a slight uphill drag at the finish um, you often see held up horses do best there as well so that's worth knowing if you're going to have a bet at Newcastle or if you're going to look for a bet at Newcastle so what have we got uh, 10 furlong, mile and a quarter, that's on the round track. 6 furlong, novice, not really for me. 5 furlong, handicap, worth having a quick look at that, see if there's anything um, that will go forwards with um, maybe getting an easy lead. Just um, refresh that a second. It's a very annoying bug when the um, this table here with the heat map on it doesn't resize and it ends up with these little gaps between between the runners, which I find extremely irksome and my developer has struggled to isolate the issue very frustrating <laughs> anyway um I, I like to look generally with these more exposed handicaps um actually this is a three-year-old one so what i will so generally with more exposed handicaps i look, like to look at the last three runs average um pace scores but in a three-year-old handicap where they are typically have had less goes I tend to go with the last two runs because uh, they might be pivoting from from a uh, let's say a not off perspective to a more um, a more uh, a going day perspective. In any case, we've got a couple, no real no, nothing in the lead column, so no real out and out speed balls. But we've got a couple in the prominent um, in the prominent column. And as you can see, that nothing led a four uh, implies led, nothing led last time, and indeed nothing led two starts back. So um, the early lead here is a bit of a head scratcher. This pink storm has raced prominently generally and led three back, uh, and Doomsday also has got a sort of prominent to led typical run style. But as I say. Um, you know, again, struggling really to make a a vaguely concrete case for one here. I think Pink Storm, if it had any form, um, would be worth a second glance. Ran second here. If I just put this on the place a minute, you can see that Pink Storm was uh, second on its only run. That was over six furlongs. This is back to five. Um, kept on, but no chance. Not obviously wanting the drop back in trip. Um, all weather form is credible, I guess. So this five will be a bit more demanding than the than the six. Um, but yeah, again, I'm not. There's there's not enough there to to draw me in particularly. Um, Carl Burke is in form at the moment. That's that's a definitely an advantage. And stats at the track are 
very strong as you can see here all the way across um, probably worth a second glance but first time blinkers is interesting as well now we can we can actually look at first time blinkers uh, train our first headgear so if we go to this report we need to go to tomorrow and uh, if I just clear this so I've got all the data I need you can see Carl Burke has run 10 horses in the last two years first time um, in first time blinkers and mm, no winners one place these are the 10 uh, they've all been prices well not all of them actually this one was 11 to 2 only ran 7th of 10 this one was 4 to 1 was last of 7 5 to 1 last of 6 not I'm not thinking the blinkers are a massive um, leg up for pink storm still it's a very small sample size and, and, and she she may she may improve for them but um, the data does not point in that direction so that's enough of that particular race uh, what else have we got we've got a couple of seven I'll, let's have a look at this mile race there's only five runners so that's um that makes life a bit more challenging um, yeah see this is that annoying bug you must find out what's causing that it drives me crazy um, looks rubbish as well when I'm doing videos which is annoying and as you can see from our pace blobs up here um, even in small fields in fact if I just change this to four to five you can see that 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 makes it a little bit um, less clear cut whereas the bigger fields you still got that advantage to the weighted with horses um, this race may be falsely run it's a horrible race pace wise small field nothing led nothing prominent um, just <coughs> not a bet not a bet no thank you uh, we will move on rapidement and that leaves Chelmsford now Chelmsford is another track again you can search for Chelmsford bias and you can get some um, insights from Dave Renham on uh, the the optimal things to look for the setups to look for at Chelmsford um, personally I uh, this is a speed track I call it the Chelmo Speedway uh, which is a little bit uncharitable maybe and I'm always interested in five furlong sprints at Chelmsford naturally there isn't one tonight uh, tomorrow rather so that's a little bit of a shame there is a six furlong contest it's a 0 to 50 classified um, which is deeply unexciting fair uh, is there any way to go in this well let's have a look at the pace map see what we have here we've got um, old Vincenzo Cocotti who's run about a million times he's actually super consistent um, as is Roxbury is pretty consistent too and those two if we look at the instant expert on the place we can see that there's lots of green and amber here that means at least in the place in the each way context it's a even though it's a, a a very moderate race it's quite competitive um, if we order them by price uh, we can see some interesting things so obviously the favorite has a line of green on the place um, has finished third and second here hasn't won but that's in handicap company um, in 0 to 55 company this is not to 50 so <laughs> this is actually a, a, a within class drop if you see what I mean um, drawn four here is a good draw for a midfield runner uh, might need a bit of luck in running it's a big field and can get a bit sticky in the straight here um, definitely not one I want to bet but I, I respect the chance now in a race like this I <laughs> I don't really want to bet anything but I would look down the list at horses that have got plenty of course form um, and are offered at a, a fair value price crazy paving is an example of that so he's, he's not only has he um, been in the frame four out of five but he's actually won three of them um, including this time last year in a similarly um, well in a 0 to 50 classified the same as this that was a hands and heels race ridden by um, quite a promising apprentice who back then was a uh, a, a, a complete unknown um, not sure who's on today tomorrow 
uh, Liam Brown, another apprentice. I mean, this is a horse that knows his own way around here. Uh, he's on the Horses for Courses tab. Of course, he is four wins and another two places from nine runs here. Um, <clears throat> the trainer's data, wins and places, all relate specifically to this horse. He's ru he runs some other ones as well as Ollie. Um, crazy paving is is um, probably not going to be fourteen to one. Got a nice, got a kind draw uh, in five to get a position behind the pace, and um, I expect he'd be would definitely be in the first. Um, definitely, he, he he has a very good chance to be in the first half of the field, um, and in a pretty uninspiring race, he's um, you know he's a he's a reasonable. Reasonable go. This Indian affair uh, also has a good setup against the race, and um, doesn't hasn't won at the track, but he's all but won. He finished third behind Crazy Paving, reopposes. Fourth behind Vincenzo Cocotti, reopposes. Uh, is Tom's half brother in here? No, and uh, nor is the Englishman. Uh, but he's another one. You know, twenty-two to one. He, he has got a terrible draw in thirteen. Um, even with, you know, even if he breaks well, he's probably going to be, when he gets to the first turn, he's going to be one, two, three, four, five, might be four, five, six wide. Um, we can see if we look at the draw tab, uh, that horses, um, horses drawn wide. You see, this is percentage of rivals beaten, horses drawn wide just have an awful lot to do so still 13 um 40 something percent of rivals beaten whereas stalls one and two are well above 55 percent which is <clears throat> uh 55 is a very good positive stat 45 is a disappointing negative stat so there's a definite kind of inside bias certainly to stall five or six or seven the first half of the field in these big fields anyway um and that would uh that would put me off indian affair completely vincenzo with his pace um i really like this horse in these low grade races but i i think it's it, with that other pace in the race here that's it's asking a lot i think if there was a bet in here and again <laughs> there almost certainly isn't crazy paving is 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 probably a bit more interesting than his price suggests um, so that's really all I wanted to say today. Essentially, in Sesame Street style, this broadcast was brought to you by the Goings Heavy and the Run Styles held up over a mile and early speed at Chelmsford. Um, those are some of the things to focus on. Uh, the, I guess the takeaways from, from this little episode. Also, remember to check the weather before you start um, if you are looking the night before and the going is good or good to soft or something like that and you see a deluge forecast you can just change this to whatever you think is um, that's helpful um, to whatever you think is <coughs> um, a an appropriate going allowing for some additional rain and um, you can view the form through the prism of that revised going and be well ahead of the curve uh, you'll be on if you've got horses that are proven to act on that going you'll be on shorteners definitely and if you're on shorteners if you've got a better price uh, than the starting price if you can do that ongoing you're going to win that's the that's the name of the game so um that's all for this first instalment. I hope I'm conscious is 40 minutes. I'm going to try and keep them to sort of 20 minutes in future. Very difficult for me because I'm verbose and um, unstructured. <laughs> uh, not, a, not a strong combination. But again, I hope there was some value in this. And um, uh, I will speak to you again soon. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.